Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. I was driving down the road, you can see behind me, something caught my eye. I looked up and I saw some large yellow colored fruits along the fence. They had apparently rolled down the hill. So I came up here to see if I could find out what it was. And here at my feet is the fruit that I found. Look at that. Isn't that interesting? And there's a whole bunch of them down here. This fruit is the fruit of a tree called Osage Orange. Today's episode is going to be about the Osage Orange tree and what is it doing here in Radford. It's a pretty interesting story, so stay tuned. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're going to find. And here's the make this basic. It's exotic. Dogwoods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes of terrestrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen. And it's... So I'm here on one of the roads, and this is the fruit that caught my eye. I was uh, in this intersection, and I looked across, and I saw this fruit here, and I said, wow, I'm going to have to go check that out. I'm going to have to find out what that is. And it's a very unusual fruit. A number of people had already emailed me or Facebooked me and sent me a picture of these things and asked, what is this? Another so as usual, I did a little bit of quick research and looked at what kind of bark does Osage Orange have and what are some of its features? Well, this is distinctly Osage Orange bark. And you can see how furrowed it is. And then if we look up on the branches of this tree, they've got lots and lots of thorns. And this was also called hedge apple. And can you see how these are all growing together in a row, almost like a fortress? Here's a branch that I picked up off the ground from the Osage Orange. And you can see that it has lots and lots of very, very sharp spines on it. That's uh, that guy right there, that's a pretty sharp spine. And that's one of the characteristics of this tree and what made it useful for settlers before we had rolls and rolls of bob wire. Osage orange tree provided fencing for cows and livestock. And apparently the more you kind of cut it to the ground, the more it would split and sprout up from the ground and create a really, really great hedge. Look at it. Look at these thorns on this thing. So as a natural fence, this stuff was pretty great. And I'm looking right here. I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen stems. You can see how it's all growing very, very packed together. Now this is younger Osage orange that's sprouting up here. You can see that the, uh, they're just covered with spines. And if you planted these together, it would, wouldn't take a very long time before you had an impenetrable hedge. So this Osage orange here is essentially creating a wall. It's really pretty amazing to see how many stems are coming up and it's really impenetrable. And here again, look at the size of this fruit. It's bigger than my fist. The fruit is really, really fascinating. So the really fascinating thing to me about this Osage orange tree, and why I was really so excited to find it, is that in all the years that I've hiked in Virginia, Pennsylvania, New Jersey. I'd never seen Osage Orange. This is the only Osage Orange I've ever seen. And what is it doing here? Well, its original range was in the far south, central southwest. It was in the Osage Indian area where the Osage Mountains are. And it had a very limited range in a narrow area through those mountains. The Osage Indians really valued this tree because it made a fantastic 
wood for bow, bow and arrows. And it was used well beyond that range. And a bow made of Osage orange tree was a, certainly a very coveted thing for its high quality. In fact, its beauty. The wood is an amazing yellow orange. In fact, at one time they extracted a yellow dye from the wood itself. So it's a very special wood. And the wood is incredibly strong and very resistant to decay. It was also used for fence posts and railroad ties and in mines, among other things. Its value as a hedge extended its range well, well beyond that area. Because everybody started to plant it instead of actual fencing. And they used the Osage orange trees as a natural fence. The Osage orange fence was said to be horse high, bull strong, and hog tight. That's how good a fence it made. Because of its use as a great wood to make bows or bows and arrows, the French called it bois de arc, which means wood for bows. <laughs> the fruit of the Osage orange tree was also called monkey brains because it kind of sort of looks like a brain. I'm going to cut one open and I'll see what it looks like on the inside. It's not as hard as I thought. It almost looks like a pineapple and it does have a, it has a sweet citrusy odor. The seeds are embedded in the flesh of this fruit. So this fruit is really fascinating because of its large size and its showiness. You know, it's hard to miss this on the woodland floor. But there isn't anything around right now that eats this. It's really not edible by humans. It's not paid attention to by any known animals. And so a lot of times where the trees grow, all the seeds are spread right there because these don't go anywhere. They just go as far as they can roll. So this white latex-like material that's coming out is really sticky. It feels exactly like Elmer's glue. And so this is another reason that animals won't eat it. It has a high amount of this very, very sticky glue-like latex secretion, which would make it very difficult and unpleasant to eat. It's theorized that this ancient tree species had a symbiotic relationship with large mammals that were here in the Ice Age, like mammoths and mastodons and sloths. The large size was attractive to them. They had adapted to eat it, and they could spread the seeds from this plant. So the seeds are located right down in here. I'm going to cut up this fruit that I have here, and I've got a great place that doesn't have anything growing right now that I'd love to see if I can get these to sprout. A lot, like a lot of other seeds, they need to be subjected to winter temperatures, alternating freezing and thawing before the seeds will actually sprout. So I hope you like this episode of Nature at Your Door as we discovered the Osage Orange. What an amazing tree. What an amazing history, and so cool to find it here in the state of Virginia, in the city of Radford. If you like what I'm doing, I hope you'll subscribe and give me a like and help spread the word to other people. Share this with teachers and family and friends. Thanks for watching Nature at Your Door, and I hope you'll watch my next episode.